Welcome to today's tutorial from the TwinSafe department. Today we take a look at the TwinSafe loader. We want to show you how you can configure the TwinSafe loader for EtherCAT mailbox gateway. And we show you how you can download a safety project with the TwinSafe loader. My name is Martin Früchtel from the Product Management Safety. After some basic information about today's tutorial, I show you our demo system. Then we go over to the live demonstration and we finish the session with an outlook to the next tutorial. The goal of today's tutorial is to show you how you can configure your system for the use of the TwinSafe loader via EtherCAT mailbox gateway and how you can download a safety project. As prerequisites today, basically you only need a TwinCAT 3 version and a TwinSafe loader version P7, which is the current release on our web page. The start of the tutorial today is an MT TwinCAT 3 solution. Our demo system consists of a CX for the EtherCAT communication and a standard PLC. We have an EL6910 as master TwinSafe logic connected to an EL1918 with a light barrier. And we have an AX8000 in the X2XX version. Those components are on the target system side and on the engineering side, we have our laptop connected to the target via Ethernet. The required functionality today is we want to download a safety project without the use of TwinCAT 3. So now it's already time for our live demonstration. We start by scanning our hardware so that we get an EtherCAT master for the configuration. So after searching for the adapters, we choose the EtherCAT adapter and let it scan for our boxes. Because there is an AX8000 in our configuration, we get the question if we want an NC configuration, but we don't need that at that time. We just let it finish the scanning. and start configuring the system. When asked for free run, we choose yes. And then we go over to the EtherCAT adapter to the advanced settings. And then in the EOE support page, we enable the virtual Ethernet switch. We enable the IP enable router checkbox. And we configure our EtherCAT mailbox gateway with a new address. 192, 168, 100, and 254. Basically, you only have to choose an address which is not present in your network. And now we only have to activate the configuration so that our configured EtherCAT mailbox gateway gets active. So we activate the configuration and go to the run mode. And now we are finished with the first step of the configuration. In the next step, we want to check if our EtherCAT mailbox gateway is reachable. So we open up a command line and we do a ping on the gateway address. So dot 254. We see that the gateway is not reachable because we have to do some additional configuration. So we go to the Windows settings for the EtherCAT adapters, Ethernet adapters. And in our case, we have a back of virtual Ethernet adapter. If you have an EtherCAT master, which is using a dedicated network interface, you have to configure that. But in our case, we have a virtual Ethernet adapter. We open up the properties. And we change the IP4 address to a static address in the same net as our EtherCAT gateway. And we use 192.168.100.1. And the common subnet, we save all configurations, close all windows, and go back to the command line. First, we ping our Ethernet adapter itself, and we can ping it. And in the next step, we check if the mailbox 
call gateway is now reachable, which is fine. So we can go over to the next step. For the next step, we have to go over to our engineering system, which is talking to our target system via Ethernet. We open up a command line on the engineering system with administrator rights because we might have to add a root. In the first step, we try to ping our gateway with the address dot 254. We see that's that it is not working at the moment. The next step, we print out the routes for our network 192, 168, 100.0. And we see under active routes that there is no route available. So in the next step, we add a route to our network 192, 168.100.0 with the usual subnet mask. And as last parameter, we use 172.17.40.19, which is the IP address of our target system. And after successful adding, we print out the routes again, and we see that we now have an active route to our target system as gateway. So now we can try to ping our gateway again, and we see that everything works fine, and we should be able to use the TwinSafe loader now. In the next step, we have to prepare our safety project for the use with the TwinSafe loader, as we want to also show you the customizing functionality of the TwinSafe loader in the next tutorial. We also prepared our safety project for the customizing case. So we have an existing TwinCare 3 solution with a safety project. And for the customizing, we want the TwinSafe Group STO channel A to be deactivatable permanently. So in the TwinSafe Group configuration, you see that we switch the permanent deactivation trigger to true. After we designed our safety project, we check if it's valid. And after that, we look at the CRC, which is in our case Z019. And we need that CRC later on for the activation of the safety project. So we, rem we remember the CRC. We also need the Ethercat address of our EO6910 target system. So we go to the Ethercat configuration and see that the EO6910 has the address 1002. And in order to download the safety project via the TwinSafe loader, we need a binary file. So we choose um, export project as bin file from the context menu and save it to our hard drive to be used with the TwinSafe loader. To do the actual download of the safety project, we go back to our command line. As we are doing a tutorial today for the TwinSafe loader, we show you step by step all the commands within the command line, but the whole functionality can also be triggered via batch file for the production process, for example, or to be triggered from an HMI. In our case, we are using the command line. So for the download, we call the TwinSafe loader with our gateway configuration. So our gateway IP address, we enter the username and the password of the ER6910, which is the default one in our case. We add the slave address 1002 we got from the Ethercat configuration. And with the parameter project, we hand over the binary file. After acknowledging the command, the TwinSafe loader is downloading the safety project to the ER6910. And when it is completed, we use the same call as before with an additional parameter CRC with our CRC C019 to do the activation process. So after that command is finished, we have downloaded the safety project and we have activated the safety project. So we could now activate the configuration and use our safety project as if we have downloaded it via the Twinker 3 download button. That was all for the live demonstration today.
In the next tutorial already mentioned, we show you how you can customize our now downloaded safety project. So we want to use the TwinSafe loader to deactivate our TwinSafe group. And we also show you how you can add additional target systems. In the current released version P7 from our webpage, uh, only a set of target systems is supported. So for example, the AX8000 is not supported yet. So in the next tutorial, we show you how you can add the AX8000 as additional target system to be used with the TwinSafe loader. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope we hear again in the next tutorial.